tonight. More tools for math nerd world domination. Now you can make people pay you to read their email. And am I being steampunked by Magic Leap again? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 298 for Thursday, March 19th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. It's the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Welcome, I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the news. Microsoft made a few big announcements about Windows 10 yesterday. The newest OS will be available earlier than expected, probably this summer. Buried in the announcement was the unexpected news that power users could install Windows 10 on Xiaomi smartphones from China. Joining us to talk about this and a few other off-the-beaten-path tech stories is Matt Weinberger, tech reporter at Business Insider. Welcome, Matt. Hi, thanks for having me. It's good to have you on again. Now, you wrote that we'd be able to install Windows 10 on Xiaomi's Mi 4 phone, which runs on Android. How would this work exactly? So if you're in the Windows Insider program, which is where Microsoft makes the latest and greatest super cutting edge versions of Windows and Windows 10 available to its users, you could theoretically put Windows 10 on your Mi 4 phone. So not anyone could do this? Just No, it. you have to be in the Windows Insider program, which is really for the earliest of early adopters. But for those who just can't wait, it's an option. Okay, so this announcement was made yesterday. There was lots of wild speculation, but then Hugo Berra clar clarified a little on Google+. Plus. Uh, what are some of the things that we learned from that post? Well, so what's really interesting about it is that Microsoft positioned it as a partnership with Xiaomi because Microsoft wants a leg up in the Chinese market and Xiaomi makes phones literally faster, that, or sells phones literally faster than they can make them. Uh, Microsoft wants in on that, so they positioned it as a partnership. Xiaomi's position officially is, it's your phone, do what you want with it. So it's maybe not so much a uh, thing they're involved in. Right, so now you can't really get the a Xiaomi phone in the United States yet, correct? At least not yet, who no. knows when. I, I know they, they gave some away in an event they had a few months ago, but. Uh, I wasn't there, so I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> no, nor I. Uh, it would be pretty cool, though. The only issue is that, so the reason it's a big deal, because these are Android phones, right? And putting Windows on an Android phone, that's kind of a big deal for Microsoft. But they're not going to let you do a dual boot. So you couldn't have Windows and Android on those phones. So is there anything about this announcement that makes you believe that maybe uh, Xiaomi is moving to Windows 10 permanently? I feel like if... By some miracle, this program is a huge, massive success. They'd be silly not to. But at the same time, whatever they're doing is obviously working. So I feel like Microsoft has more to gain than Xiaomi from all of this. Right. So so they both have their own reasons for doing it. I mean, what's, exactly. what's Xiaomi, what, what do you think Xiaomi's reason is? Xiaomi's reason is just, like I said, it's your phone, do what you want with it. They've made a big deal about giving you the option to install whatever you'd like on your phone. Uh, and this is just them following through with it. But Microsoft, they're making it very, very clear that this is Microsoft taking the point. Right. And I mean, they, they Xiaomi wants to beat Apple. I mean, everybody does, right? So That's exactly right. They might as well all gang up on Apple. And That's exactly right. And they, they have nothing to lose by letting people install whatever they want on their phones, at least at this point. Exactly. And like I said, if it's, if it's a huge success, maybe next year or two years, we'll see some Windows 10 phones from Xiaomi. Right. So you wrote another article for Business Insider about a new product that's launched today in limited beta. It's called Radio. Uh, the service is designed to make people pay you to read an email from them. So it's sort of like holding your attention hostage or something. How does this work? This is kind of funny, but... Uh, it, it's basically a dream come true. I mean, you get tons and tons of unsolicited email a day. And wh why shouldn't you make 99 cents per email that comes in? Uh, they take a cut, obviously. I think it's it's like a sliding scale around 30, 40%. So on a 99 cent email, you pay them 30, 35 cents. But the way it works is you get an email address with them. If any email that comes to that address, they get an invoice. If they pay up whatever you set, 99 cents, $99, whatever, then it gets forwarded to your actual inbox. So so you use your regular email and then you give your email to Rideo and then they, they get all your email and then forward it if the person pays? That's exactly right. So if they don't pay, you will never see that email. <laughs> Pluses and minuses. That, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's interesting. Obviously, it's just a, a concept 
funny thing to talk about, yep. but it is interesting because it just shows how uh, broken the whole system of email is. Like when I think about, I can think of tons of people that I would love to pay, to have them pay before I read their email. But obviously I wouldn't want that, you know, from my mom or my husband or no, my exactly. kids. So. Yeah, and it's, it's super useful. I mean, you know that if you have, if you're a public official or a journalist or a writer or a musician even, you have your email out there at all. And within 30 seconds, it's flooded with with email that just isn't that important to you. By putting a premium on it, by putting a premium on unwanted email, maybe it tips the scales a little. Right. And you say in your article that it's kind of the same as the price of a stamp. I mean, you no, know, that's what the, yeah, the founder says, and he came up with, the founder says it's about the cost of a stamp. It's no different than spending 37 cents on a stamp to send a letter to Justin Bieber. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but there's all kinds of interesting other use cases for it. Like, like legitimately, if you're a contractor or or a consultant or something, and it's after 6 p.m., then when they email you, they can email your radio address, and that's 10 bucks to get your attention after hours, you know? Right, to get an e immediate response. That's exactly right. Uh, for, for if you're running customer support, if you're doing anything like that, it has potential uses. Right now, it's obviously someone's garage project, but who knows? Right, so I mean, would you, act, have, you have you used it yet? No, actually, I haven't been able to bring myself. I feel like it's a little egotistical yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways to put it a price is. on email. Yeah, it would so you nice. Told me, you told me before the show that you were putting a $10,000 bounty on your emails. <laughs> right, I was. But yeah. not for me, which I appreciate. Exactly, yes. Uh, yeah, I think it is interesting. I mean, one thing, I was going to sign up. I mean, you, it's a limited beta, but as you pointed out, that if you go through the link through Product Hunt, you can uh, you can sign up. I mean, when I went, That's right. When I went through their website, they said, well, we'll invite you soon. But then, you know, it's something that you have to link to, you know, some kind of account, to your Stripe account. So That's I just, right. you know, it's that one, well, well, how much? Or to, or to charity through Watsi. Oh, right, right. There was, have you heard of that charity before, Watsi? Uh, so Watsi is, as I understand it, and I'm sure I'll get an angry tweet in 30 seconds if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Watsi is just another platform that lets you donate money directly. So you can set it up where it goes. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so that's interesting. So now you're, you're not saying like, I just want to be greedy and have everyone pay me for reading right. their email. You're just saying, you know, take a minute before you really send me this email. Do I really need to read it? Is it something that needs to be in front of my face or not? So Exactly. And it's like a psychological experiment. It's like when you're about to send a really stupid email to someone, it makes them maybe ask themselves, is this worth a nickel to me? Right, exactly. I mean, I think about that, you know, that used to be in the times of writing letters and thank you notes. It's like those really matter now because it yep. takes time. And so maybe we need to put a premium on that too. Maybe. I think it's an interesting experiment. Right. Well, I always think about the time that I heard uh, Leo interview Evan about Twitter a million years ago before it was starting. And they were having this their, their first conversation about like, well, I might use something like Twitter. I'm, I'm not sure. So... This could be the next Twitter. You don't know, right? Maybe it could. You never know. <laughs> so let's talk about another new company. It's called Sense. It's designed to give better tools to math nerds to help them yep. harness the power of big data. Explain what Sense is. So Sense is a platform. So we kind of to start at the beginning. We're all generating, every last one of us, immense amounts of data behind us as we go. Pictures we upload to Dropbox, tweets we make, Facebook statuses, all of that it just adds up. It's why Facebook is sitting on a 300 petabyte data storage. Uh, even now, it's probably bigger since they last reported that. Uh, so what happens is if you're working at a company that's collecting all that data, you know, you run an online store, you run, you run a research lab, you're working to cure cancer even. You have so much data, more data than ever before that you got to get through, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there are tools that help you work with data, like even Excel and pivot tables have that stuff. It's nothing new to work with that data, but then real math nerds, like I say, uh, real statisticians, PhDs, people who actually know what it, how to work with equations, they need better tools to actually do all that stuff. And as it stands today, 99% of that happens on a laptop, like the MacBook in front of you. But you know that was fine when the data you're working with is like 500 megabytes. But now when you, know, you can generate a gigabyte of data a day, you need more power. Right. And that's what Sense tries to do. Right. So, but it is using the power of people, not just like the power of technology to harness all this data, but the people that know how it works and understand and that's that. exactly right. That's exactly right. So really what it does is it straps a supercomputer to, to the statistician's computer, if you know what I mean. You can, if for people who really know what they're doing, they can look at that data, go, hey, that's cool, and then go underneath it to the actual equations and fiddle with the equations and do really complicated stuff that I can't even explain because I got a C in math in high school. <laughs> That so kind of thing. It's, right. 
Ah, uh, that's why we're journalists, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so since launch today with some pretty big backers and they announced that they, last year they took in $1.1 million in seed funding. Who are the people supporting this company? And uh, So they have a Facebook co-founder and a former Microsoft chief economist. And that's just the seed founding, uh, the seed round rather. So who knows, maybe maybe a big, big venture firm will come along and, and give them more money soon. Uh, people seem to really like it, just judging from Twitter. Like I said, not really qualified to judge, but uh, people dig it. The math nerds you like, you know, yeah. like it. Yeah, basically, okay. basically. <laughs> well, thank you, Matt. Matt Weinberger is a tech reporter at Business Insider. Thanks for coming on. I always love your insight. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> take care. You coming too. up, a robot-loving engineer is about to take over the White House, and you have only 15 minutes to decide if you want to spend your children's college fund on an Apple Watch. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to develop an app, learn WordPress, boost your productivity, or sharpen your business skills. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. If you're ready to start taking better photos, you should check out lynda.com's Foundations of Photography and Photography 101 series. This series has tutorials covering basics like composition, exposure, and a lot more. They also have wonderful courses on Photoshop, and they just released a first look at photos for Mac, which is Apple's replacement for iPhoto and Aperture. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts, which allow you to follow along or search for an answer and skip to that point. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for a free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. And we thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Sources at the Wall Street Journal say that HBO, Showtime, and Sony are attempting to create that internet fast lane that the net neutrality rules were designed to avoid. According to people familiar with the discussions, the three entertainment companies have been in talks with Comcast about having their streaming options treated like a managed service in order to avoid internet traffic congestion and data caps. Reuters reports that a U.S. District Court judge today granted preliminary approval to a $10 million settlement agreement in the class action suit against Target. Victims of the 2013 data breach at the giant retailer could receive up to $10,000 per person. And there is officially one more nerd in the White House today. According to the White House blog, President Obama named David Recorden as Director of White House Information Technology, a newly created position. Recorden was the former engineering director at Facebook and will now be tasked with bringing the White House's information technology infrastructure up to date. And my greatest hope is that on his first day at the office, Recorden wears the I Heart Robots t-shirt that he has in his picture on his Wikipedia page. There he is. I hope he goes just like that. In today's Apple Watch Watch, Mark Gurman from 9to5Mac reports that starting April 10th, April, Apple will offer customers time-limited 15-minute guided in-store try-on appointments at dedicated try-on stations. Reservations for particular models are recommended. Customers will then be able to make follow-up appointments to pick up the watch on April 24th. Apple stores will also have stock available on launch day for walk-in appointments. And in other Apple Watch news, Google, Intel, and Tag Heuer, I think that's how you pronounce that, have per partnered to create an Android luxury smartwatch that I will neither be able to pronounce nor afford to buy. And finally, today we get the first look at what might be the future of augmented reality, or I got to spend one minute and 35 seconds watching a steampunk-inspired robot-hating special effects video created by the Weta Workshop, the folks behind The Hobbit, Avatar, and Spider-Man movies. We've talked before about Magic Leap, a mysterious augmented reality company backed by Google, sci-fi writer Neil Stevenson, and others. This is the video they launched today on YouTube. Uh, Magic Leap hasn't shown us much yet except a considerable amount of PR hype. And it didn't look good that they just canceled their TED Talk, which was believed to be their coming out party. Today, Magic Leap released this video with the title, Just Another Day in the Office at Magic Leap, and a tease that this was a game they were playing around with at work. You can judge for yourself whether this is the near or the far or the never going to happen future. I hope it is going to happen. It looks cool.
We'll see. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can always write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. I will never charge you. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And today's TN2 Selfie Fan of the Day is Jeremy TM from New Zealand, who watches Tech News Tonight while coding his latest game. Thanks for watching, Jeremy. Good luck with the game. And Kia Ora from all of us here in Petaluma. Send us more of your selfies. We want to see you watching the show. Tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or you can send them in email to TN2 at twit.tv. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and we will show your selfie on the show. And have you taken our annual audience survey yet? Go to twit.tv slash survey. Tell us what you think. The survey is anonymous, so feel free to let us have it. We only want to be better for you. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey.